Hey you all, I'm back here. Uh, today we are going to continue lesson nine and we are going to the section structures to practice, which is about grammar. So today we are going to discuss the use of the indefinite article a and versus the definite article the. So in the book, we see the following. Use a or an when you first talk about something. Use the when you talk about something for the second time or when it's clear what you are talking about. So let's put it this way. A an is when you talk about something ordinary, like I'm a teacher, you are a student, okay? UFMA is a university, okay? So we do not have to be specific. We are generic. That's why we call a an indefinite articles. I prefer this definition, okay? And the is when you are specific, you are talking about a specific object, you are talking about a specific person, so you use the as a definite article, okay? So it's a matter of specificity, right? We have the examples. Example number one, <clears throat> we have a reservation, okay? So here is the introduction of the word reservation is what we have. We have a reservation. The reservation is for eight o'clock. Which reservation? The specific reservation I mentioned in the first period, in the first sentence, we have a reservation. So we have a reservation and the reservation that I mentioned before is for eight o'clock. So the book says use a n when you first talk about something, so when you introduce something and use the, when you talk about something for the second time, this is a possible application, but this is not the only one. Let's say use a and when you are generic. Let's put a G here for generic and use the when you are specific so let's put s here sp for specific okay this is a better definition so let's see the examples here and the second example i'd like an aperitive i didn't say if this aperitive is gin and tonic or a dose of cognac i didn't say that i just said it's an aperitive now is this the menu why do you use the here because the menu is the specific menu for that restaurant okay this is a menu which menu? I don't know. But when I say this is the menu for Landrua restaurant, then I know I'm talking about a specific menu. Okay. Another important consideration about the indefinite article AN is when I use each of them. Normally, I use A with consonant sound. This goes with consonant sound. Okay. And we use N and we use N with vowel sound.
All right. So pay attention. I didn't say letter. I said sound. Why? Because sometimes we have transcriptions like UFMA is a university. And in this case, a university. I have letter U, which is a vowel, but it behaves as a semi vowel. Why? Because the transcription of university is the following. I'll put the screen sharing here for you to see the dictionary. Just a moment. In the dictionary here, if you search for the word university, and you look at the transcription, over here, the phonetic transcription is with this Y, which is represented by the letter, the Greek letter Yota, and the U, so U university. It's what I call a semi vowel. Okay? Now, if you listen, just a moment. If you listen to the audio of the pronunciation, you have this in British English university and in american english university anyway what you have is yeah okay so that's what i mean when i say the important thing is the sound and not the spelling not the letter the sound is important we are going to see examples in which this happens let's go back here So, let me just erase these notes. Give me just a moment, please. I'll open the file again. So, we have a reservation. As you can see, reservation has a consonant sound. I like an aperitive. As you can see, aperitive has a vowel sound, a vocalic sound. And is this the menu? The menu is specific. Okay, I'm talking about the specific menu. Now, the exercise tells us, exercise number three, complete the sentences with a, n, 
or the. <clears throat> so let's make decisions here. And we have adjoining room. Are you talking about a specific adjoining room at the hotel or any ad adjoining room would serve for you, would do for you? Of course, any adjoining room, okay? So can we have an adjoining room? Why not a? Because adjoining is pronounced with vowel sound, okay? Next one, what's dish of the day? Well, if there is a dish of the day, of course, it's a specific dish, okay? So instead of a or an, I will use the, what is the dish of the day? Because I'm talking about a specific food, a specific dish. Number three, could we have table for four? Well, normally, we don't have a preferred table for four. We want any table for four. Any table would do, okay? I don't want a specific one. I want just a table for four. And now, why a and not an? Because table, the word table, starts with a consonant sound, okay? Number four, put olive on a cocktail stick. Now, do we have to select a specific olive or any olive would do? Of course, put an olive on a cocktail stick. Why an and not a? Because the word olive, the pronunciation is a, it's a vowel, okay? So put an olive on a cocktail stick, then put olive in the glass. Now, it's the second time we refer to this olive. Now that I made reference to the olive, I'm talking about a specific olive, not any olive. So now it's the olive. Which olive? The olive I talked about here when I said put an olive okay, on a cocktail stick, then put the olive in the glass, okay? In number five, yes, the hotel has car park. The hotel has a car park. I don't want to be specific here. I don't need to be specific here. The hotel has a car park. Why a and not n? Because the word starts with C, with not with C the letter, but with the sound K, car park, okay? And finally, number six, put some crushed ice into cocktail shaker, A, N, or the. Well, I'm talking about any cocktail shaker available. My cocktail shaker, your cocktail shaker, or his, her cocktail shaker will depend on who I'm talking to. It's not specific, it's generic, so a cocktail shaker. And why A and not N? Because I'm being generic. And again, pour three measures of gin into shaker and stir. Now it's the second time I talk about this shaker. Okay? It is the second time I'm talking about the shaker that I mentioned here as a cocktail shaker. Now it's time to use the, because in the second time I'm being specific, I am talking about the same shaker. So pour three measures of gin into the shaker and stir. Okay? So I hope you understood the difference between a, n, or the. The book says to use a, n, or some. Now the book is going to compare the differences between a and or some. And the book will say, we use a and an, the indefinite article, so I for indefinite and a for article. We use the indefinite article instead of the number one 
to talk about countable nouns. So nouns that we can count, for example, one finger, one remote control, one camera, one glass, okay? And we use some to talk about uncountable nouns, nouns that you cannot count, okay? You cannot say one, two, or three. For example, milk. You cannot count milk. One milk, two milks, three milks. You can count liters of milk, bottles of milk, glasses of milk, but never milk. I say two glasses of milk, but not two milks. Milk is uncountable. Coffee is uncountable. I don't say one coffee, two coffees. I know that in informal language, I can say I want one coffee or two coffees, but in fact, when I say that, what I want is two cups of coffee, one cup of coffee, a jar or one jar of coffee. So I will use some with uncountable nouns. What are uncountable nouns? They are nouns substantivos in Portuguese, which I depend on units of measures. Units like I need meters or liters or uh, centimeters or glass. to count, okay? So if I need to use meters, liters, centimeters, glasses, uh, teaspoons, dishes, cups, everything I need, another unit of measure, it's because it's a symptom that it's an uncountable noun. Let's see the examples here, okay? Of the uses of a n versus some. Examples. I'd like a bottle of wine. I'd like an aperitif. Okay? So, you can count bottles. One bottle of wine, two bottles of wine, three bottles of wine, one aperitif, two aperitifs, ten aperitifs. Okay? But what is implicit here is a dose. Of an aperitif, okay? So that's, that's the implicit concept in this informal language. A bottle of wine is kind of explicit. I cannot count wine. Wine is uncountable. Sorry. Wine is uncountable. Because I don't say one wine, two wines, three wines. I say one bottle of wine, two bottles of wine, one liter of wine, ten liters of wine. Okay. So here I'm using a with bottle, which is countable, and an with aperitif, which is implicitly countable because I'm talking about those of an aperitif. Now let's see the second example. I'd like some bread. Ah, teacher, but I can count um pãozinho, dois pãozinhos, três pãozinhos. Not in English. In English, bread is the substance, it's the name of the continual substance. You cannot count one bread, two breads, three breads. You count one piece of bread, two pieces of bread, three pieces of bread, one slice of bread, two slices of bread. But bread is uncountable. That's why we say, I'd like some bread. I'd like some water. How do we count water? Bottles of water glasses of water, 
liters of water, okay? I'd like some milk. The same example, we count bottles of milk, boxes of milk, liters of milk, glasses of milk. We depend on units of measure like meters, liters, kilometers, uh, milliliters, or and so on. The same for money, okay? That's why I say I have some money in my pocket. Say some. Sorry. Sorry about this. Some. Money. Because I don't know what kind of money is that. Is it dollar? Is it real? Is it yen? Is it euro? We don't know. So we say, I have some money in my pocket. Now I can say instead, I have ten reais in my pocket. And now I can say ten, so it's a number. Reais are countable. Dollars are countable. Yenis are countable. Pesos are countable. Money is not countable. Money is money. It's uncountable. Okay? Unless you specify the currency. Dollars, reais, euros, whatever. Okay? That's why I say some money. But I can say I have a one real coin in my wallet. Because in this case, I'm being specific about the currency. Okay, so this is the difference between a n and some. So now <coughs> we go to exercise four to solve it. Complete the sentences with a n or some. So here we have to decide if it's countable or uncountable. <coughs> Sorry about this. <clears throat> Let's go to the exercise. <coughs> Number one. Would you like wine? Can you count wine? Of course not. You count bottles of wine, liters of wine, glasses of wine. So in this case, we use some <clears throat> so would you like some fine and then bottle of chablis please a bottle of chablis and bottle of chablis or some bottle of chablis What's the word in question here? It's the word bottle. Do you count bottles? Yes. It's exactly because you can count bottles that the word bottle goes to the plural. Bottles, uncountable words, don't have a plural. They are always in the plain form, the singular form. Okay, Wine. I don't say wines. I say wine. Okay, but bottle, I can talk about bottles. So, would you like some wine? Number two, bottle of Chablis, please. A or N? Well, the word bottle starts with consonant sound, B. So, it's A bottle of Chablis. Sorry about this. I want it. <clears throat> ah, bottle of Chablis. Box here. A bottle of Chablis, please. Number three. <clears throat> Could we have bread? Well, we talked about bread as a continuous substance. So, sorry. Bread here, 
There's a continual substance. We don't count bread. We count one piece of bread, two pieces of bread, three slices of bread. But bread, I do not have the plural for bread. So instead of a n, what I have is, could we have some bread? Next one. Would you like aperitif? We have seen this in the example. Aperitif starts with vowel sound, a. Ah. I can count doses of aperitif. It is implicit when I say aperitif that I'm talking about a dose of a mixture of drinks or a specific drink. So aperitif, a, n, or some. What do you think? That's it. An aperitif because it starts with vocalic sound, with the vowel sound, a, ah, an aperitif. And I'm not being specific here, any aperitif, okay? Number five, could I have ice cream in my Coke? Well, again, ice cream like bread, like milk, like coffee is a continuous substance. You count balls of ice cream, you count cups of ice cream, you count portions of ice cream, but not one ice cream, two ice creams, three ice creams, okay? So, could I have some ice cream in my Coke? Because it's uh, an uncountable noun, ice cream is uncountable. You cannot count ice cream, put it in the plural. And how about taxi? Can you count taxi? One taxi, two taxis, three taxis? Yes. So our question now is A or N. Which one should we use? Well, the word taxi starts with T. Consonant sound. So A taxi. You call me A taxi. Number seven, just glass of red wine, please. Is he talking about the wine or about the glass of red wine? Yes, the immediate reference after the blanks is the word glass. Now, do I have a plural for glass? Can I distinguish one glass from another glass? Of course. One glass, two glasses, three glasses. So just one glass of red wine. And we learned in the grammar that we can substitute one by the words, the indefinite articles, a or an. The word glass starts with g, a vocalic sound. Sorry, a consonantal sound. It's a, a consonant sound. Okay? So this g tells me that instead of one, I can use a, a glass of red wine. Why not N? Because the sound here in the word glass is G. It's a, vo it's a consonant sound, not vocalic. Number eight, the last one. I want to change money. Did he say dollars? Did he say reais? Pay attention, the words dollars, reais, euros, yenes, they all go to the plural. But the word money does not go to the plural. There is no such a thing like monies. What I have is currencies. Okay, moedas. But not monies. Okay, money is a word that always stays in the singular because it's uncountable. So if it's uncountable, the only option I have is the word sum, okay? So I want to change some money. Even if he said dollars, if I don't want to be specific about the quantity, I could use the word sum. I need to change some dollars. I don't want to say how much dollars, okay? But anyway, it is important for you to understand the concept of countable and uncountable. Countable is everything that has a plural. And uncountable 
is everything, every object you refer to that cannot be counted unless you use a unit of measure. Glasses, liters, meters, kilometers, currencies like reais, dollars, euros, or cups like flour, sugar, okay? slices like bread, cake, they are all uncountable because you need a unit of measure, okay? And now we go to the listening exercise number five. <clears throat> In exercise number five, are you ready to order? We have to listen to the dialogues and complete the orders, and then we should use the words in this square over here, okay? So we are going to complete with these words according to what we hear. I will play the audio, okay? So audio track 21 for those who want to practice at home. Let's play the audio. Unit 9. Are you ready to order? 1. What would you like for breakfast, madam? Just a coffee and a croissant, please. I'll have egg and bacon and a pot of tea. And some toast, please. Thank you, sir. Can I have your room number? 2. Are you ready to order, sir? Yes, please. For a starter, I'd like basil and tomato soup. Then to follow, I'll have the mushroom risotto. Would you like something to drink? A glass of dry white wine and some water, please. Three. I just want a light lunch. I'll have mushroom soup and a toasted sandwich. Um, cheese and ham, please. And for you, madam? Um, the chef's salad, please. And some bread. Okay, so now let's do it with pauses. Let's go to dialogue number one. He wants egg and something. And then a pot of something. So let's see. Unit 9. Are you ready to order? 1. What would you like for breakfast, madam? Just a coffee and a croissant, please. I'll have egg and bacon and a pot of tea. Just a coffee and a croissant, please. I'll have egg and bacon and a pot of tea. Well, if you said he wants to have egg and, 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 and bacon, he'll have egg and bacon. And what else? I'll have egg and bacon and a pot of tea. And a pot of soup, salad. No, a pot of tea. So let's transcribe. I'll have egg and bacon and a pot of tea. Okay. Number one is done. Let's go to dialogue number two. And some toast, please. Thank you, sir. Can I have your room number? Two. Are you ready to order, sir? Yes, please. For a starter, I'd like basil and tomato soup. Then to follow, I'll have the mushroom risotto. Would you like something to drink? Are you ready to order, sir? Yes, please. For a starter, I'd like basil and tomato soup. For a starter, who wants basil and tomato? What? Yes soup okay if you didn't hear that if you didn't get it go back in the video and listen again okay basil and tomato soup what kind of risotto does he want so pay attention when he says the word risotto and guess what kind of risotto is that not guess distinguish please for a starter, I'd like basil and tomato soup. Then to follow, I'll have the mushroom risotto. Would you like something to drink? 
tomato soup. Then to follow, I'll have the mushroom risotto. What kind of risotto? Yes, if you said the mushroom risotto, you were right. Okay, so let's transcribe it. Let's put the word mushroom here. The mushroom risotto. Let me just drag. Sometimes it's hard, you know, to use this. Mushroom. It's hard to move. Yes, okay, mushroom risotto. Okay, now let's go to dialogue number three. Okay, let me put it visible here. So we have cheese and ham. What do you think? Cheese and ham salad or sandwich? We cannot know unless we listen to the audio. And finally, the chef's salad or the chef's sandwich? Well, this is what I want to know. What is cheese and ham? Is it the sandwich or the salad? And what is the chef's? The salad or the sandwich? Listen to it. Would you like something to drink? A glass of dry white wine and some water, please. Three. I just want a light lunch. I'll have mushroom soup and a toasted sandwich. Um, cheese and ham, please. And for you, madam? Um, the chef's salad, please, and some bread. Mushroom soup and a toasted sandwich. Um, cheese and ham, please. And for you, madam? Um, the chef's salad, please. Okay, the second woman says the chef's what? The chef's salad. So, by exclusion, the cheese and ham is the sandwich. But she doesn't mention the word sandwich, did she? It's implicit that she's talking about a sandwich. Let's listen to the audio again. Sandwich. Um, cheese and ham, please. And for you, madam? You see? I just want a light lunch. I'll have mushroom soup and a toasted sandwich. Um, cheese and ham, please. Okay, cheese and ham, please. Cheese and ham sandwich. By exclusion, because she does not mention that. Sandwich. All right, so we have finished this exercise. If you didn't understand it, Please go back to it and listen to the resolution of the exercise as many times as you feel it's necessary. Finally, number six, listen again and put the food and drink into three menus. Which menus? The menu for breakfast, the menu for lunch, and the menu for dinner. Remember, breakfast in the morning, lunch basically at 12 o'clock midday 12 midday and dinner at night okay so you're going to put into categories listen again and put the food and drink into three menus well we have the food and drink here soup in which menu do you put dinner well some people would put soup in any menu but normally we have soup at dinner. And how about the salad, the chef salad? Well, we can put it for lunch. But some people would put it for dinner. I don't know. It's very, it's a very free choice, you know, because it depends on cultural contexts. But considering the Anglo-Saxon cultural context, I think it would be like this. Now, we deal we dealt with the soup, with the salad, now the mushroom. The mushroom is a mushroom risotto. Where would you put it? You're probably right if you said in the lunch menu. So, mushroom risotto. 
let's put this font smaller. Image for risotto. Let's try to make it smaller. All right. Again, we dealt with the mushroom risotto. Now, the bacon, egg and bacon. Yes, as you already know, North Americans and British people normally have it for breakfast, egg and bacon. How about tea? Does tea go for lunch, breakfast, or dinner? Breakfast, lunch, or dinner? Tea, a pot of tea. Well, I would say in our culture, and probably in theirs too, it can be part of breakfast, isn't it? So, a pot of tea. Tea is not a cup of tea, it's bigger, okay? It's like a jar, a pot of tea. And finally, the sandwich. As you know, Americans normally don't have lunch. They have a sandwich instead. Okay, I know it's strange in our culture, but they would have a sandwich. In this case, a cheese and ham sandwich. At lunch. Okay. Let's listen to the, to the audio again to confirm. Okay. We need to confirm this resolution. But it's culturally like this. Let's listen to it. Unit 9. Are you ready to order? 1. What would you like for breakfast, madam? Just a coffee and a croissant, please. I'll have egg and bacon and a pot of tea. And some toast, please. Thank you, sir. Can I have your room number? Two. Are you ready to order, sir? Yes, please. For a starter, I'd like basil and tomato soup. Then to follow, I'll have the mushroom risotto. Would you like something to drink? A glass of dry white wine and some water, please. Three. I just want a light lunch. I'll have mushroom soup and a toasted sandwich. Um, cheese and ham, please. And for you, madam? Um, the chef's salad, please, and some bread. Uh, during the correction, I made a mistake. I talked about lunch all the time, but I put chef's salad into the breakfast. It's lunch, okay? The chef's salad. So let's move this here. Egg and bacon, pot of tea, the chef salad goes for lunch, okay? Now, mushroom risotto could be either lunch or dinner. Como eu tenho aqui dois espaços para cada, o mushroom risotto para mim poderia ser tanto almoço quanto jantar. Mas como são dois espaços para cada, eu suponho que ele está falando do mushroom risotto como um dinner, para que fique tudo bem distribuído. Então, nós temos os sanduíches, we have the sandwiches, we have the chef salad for lunch, dois para cada, ok? Mas culturalmente poderia estar aqui como dinner, o mushroom risotto, ou aqui como lunch, ok? So, with this, we finish lesson 9, ok? We do not have any other contents for lesson 9, so you are enabled to do the exercises that I'll make available right now, ok? Então, eu vou disponibilizar agora os arquivos de resolução do workbook da lição 9. Vocês já estão autorizados a assistir esse vídeo e o vídeo anterior, claro, lição 9A e lição 9B. Após assistir, compreender, praticar isso no workbook e submeter para mim via SIGA. Estou indo agora abrir a atividade no sistema, ok? Com a lição 9.
ok? Lembrando, submeta sempre em arquivo PDF. So for today, that's all. I'll be back soon with lesson 10, ok? In a recorded video and with my instructions, ok? On how to study, develop your knowledge and practice lesson 10. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.